If you're a new subcontractor in Kentucky and need insurance, this video is for you. You're probably curious what insurance you're required to have as well as what insurance you should probably consider having in place. For purposes of this video, let's go over insurance for subcontractors. I am Adam Sheridan with Reed Brothers Insurance and one area of insurance that we focus specifically on is contractors. From one-man shops to businesses with hundreds of employees, we build insurance programs for each level of your contracting business. Now, whether you're a new subcontractor, subcontractor just getting started or you've been in business for years, insurance is probably still a confusing and daunting task. Now, there's certain insurance policies required of you by the state. If you're going to perform work for another business or contractor, they're probably going to have insurance requirements before they even allow you on their job site. And then there's some other insurance coverages that it simply just a good idea to have in place. First, let's go over what's required of you by the state of Kentucky. If you're an electrician, fire protection system contractor, HVAC, or plumber, you're required to submit proof of general liability insurance to the state of Kentucky. Depending on the license, you may only be required to carry as little as $250,000 per occurrence in general liability coverage, but a good rule of thumb and best practice here is to carry at least a million dollars in coverage. If you send proof of insurance, better known in this commercial space as a certificate of insurance, over to someone that you're doing a job for and you only have $250,000 in coverage, they might laugh at you. They're also more likely to pick that other guy that's got a million dollars. General liability is typically trip, slip, and fall coverage. Your work, sometimes considered faulty craftsmanship, is not covered by general liability, but we'll talk more on that in a minute. Next, go, let's go over if you plan on working for maybe a general contractor or other business. They're typically going to have specific insurance requirements as part of your contract. The best way to handle this is to provide your insurance agent with a copy of this contract. We need to see this contract to make sure we have your insurance set up properly. We can't insure what we don't know. We want this process to go smooth with the general contractor or business that you're working with so it helps you and us if we can see that contract so we get it right the first time and there's no back and forth. Some insurance companies simply cannot meet the requirements of these contracts. They may require specific endorsements and policy language. It's another reason why you need to make sure you're working with an independent insurance agent like us here at Reed Brothers in this case. Lastly, let's go over some insurance that you may also need or at least is a good idea to have. Let's start with business or commercial auto. If you have a vehicle that's wrapped with your logo or a magnetic sign on your vehicle, you probably need this in place instead of your personal car insurance. If you have several company vehicles or a fleet, it's a good idea to ask some more questions of your agent on this one. If all your vehicles are wrapped in your company logo, you need to add some additional coverage for that wrap. If that vehicle gets damaged, there's not going to be automatic coverage to pay to rewrap it. You may also be eligible for certain discounts depending on the safety features and, and the programs that you have in place. Do you own or lease a building? If you own it, you'll need a property policy to insure that building. Depending on your lease, you may also be required to insure the building. Do you have building materials or other inventory inside your building? You may want contents coverage for those items. Something else to consider is typically called inland marine coverage. What we're going to cover here are different tools you or your employees have, like work trailers and equipment that you lease from other businesses. You may also want to add on an installation floater here to cover materials you have at different job sites. Are you taking on larger jobs that require you to be bonded? Bid bonds, performance and, payment bond job, performance and payment bonds, and other surety bonds may be required, especially if you're doing a job for a state or governmental entity. It's important to work with an agent with knowledge in this area that can help secure that bond for you. It's equally, if not more important, that you and your business have, fun, have your financial house in order before jumping into this. Remember when I said faulty workmanship is not covered earlier? No matter how long you've been doing it or how careful you are, mistakes can happen, right? Maybe it wasn't necessarily your fault, but maybe you installed some faulty materials from your supplier. When the client suffers financially because of your mistake, maybe there were project delays, loss of income, reinstallation of floors, the contractor's E&O policy can cover your liabilities. Now, it's important to note that if your faulty workmanship causes property damage or bodily injury to the client, that is a general liability claim. The contractor's E&O policy is meant to supplement those gaps already on your commercial liability policy. Last but not least, workers' compensation. We talk more in depth about this in our other videos, but let's set this right up front. Just because you're 1099, 1099 guys, that doesn't mean you don't have employees. 
It just means you aren't giving them W-2s. If they get hurt, if an insured subcontractor is working for you, get hurt, they can file work comp claims against you. If you have a policy, that policy will be obligated to provide to pay provided it was in course of work for you. If you don't have a policy, you're still financially responsible for their injuries and lost wages. If you own a contracting business and have employees in Kentucky and have more questions about your policy, give us a call, 606-679-6311. You can shoot me an email, or you can also visit our website at rbisomerset.com anytime. Thank you, and we look forward to working with you.